I haven't done a predictions video. I don't think I've ever done a predictions video on wrestling. And I think it's time. Now, upon recording this, there has been no confirmation of two of the belts being defended at Mania. Um, there's speculation that at least one of those could happen on uh, Friday Night Smackdown this week or could be added last minute. So take that as you will. I'll throw in my two cents about it at some point, but let's get into WrestleMania 38 predictions. Two nights of WrestleMania. Okay, I'm going to start off by saying that I am not nearly as excited about this WrestleMania as I have been ones prior. I just feel like a lot of the matches don't really have anything to them. I, I, I wish it did. I wish I wish I can get more excited about this. I'm, I'm really not. That's not to say there aren't good matches. There's just... There's a lot here that is just very underwhelming. There's some here that I roll my eyes at. And there are some good matches. And we'll get to those. So... This list I got off of their website, and I believe I believe this is the setup for night one and two. I also got this from the setup I had seen in another video. So, uh, Mustache Bros Wrestling, if they got the nights wrong, that's on them. I'm going on what I saw from their prediction video for this. Um, and I'll just go through each one discussing. So... Let me know. Uh, let me know in comments if you agree, disagree, what your picks are. Um, if you think we're, what like what surprises we're going to get throughout those two nights. Uh, I'm not going to cover NXT Stand and Deliver. Um, however, for the sake of argument, I will say that I think that I think that Ziggler retains the NXT title, and I think they're just going to move on to a different feud. Some people are saying that Braun Breaker could move up. I think that's way too early. So I don't really know. I haven't really been following this new NXT direction. Um, that I maybe maybe I'll discuss that some other way. So night one, um, Bianca Belair and Becky for the I believe it's the Raw Women's whatever 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 belt she has. And I apologize. Uh, just off the top of my head, I don't know. Uh, I I I want to say it's the the red brand belt. But I also think I'm wrong. But it's it's for it's for one of the women. Uh, it's for one of the brand championships. I had Bianca winning. Um, they're spanning this whole feud from when Be or when Becky came back at SummerSlam and uh, ended up, you know, sucker punching uh, Bel Air and hitting the man hand like you know the man handles whatever they call it. Um, I. I for whatever reason, I'm drawing blanks on the on these things. But she hits her finisher on her, which is basically the rock bottom, and then one, two, three gets the win. So they've been building this up, and I, I think this is I think this is Bel Air's redemption. I think she's gonna be I think she's gonna probably build as one of the best wrestlers on the card because in my opinion, I do think she is like the best on both brands, possibly possibly the best. She's definitely within like the top one or two. She's really good in the ring. She's she's good on the microphone. She just you know experience is what she's building, and I think she brings it all. I think, <sighs> and as far as my reasons why I don't think Becky will win, I, I just I think this I think they're gonna want to start off night one on a good note, um, and in what better way than having Belair get back the championship that she kind of kind of got a little screwed over from getting, and she had to deal with Becky. Months after the fact. Um, I see this kind of going into another feud later on, which we'll get to when I talk about that match. Uh, so I have Bianca over Becky. The next one is the Mysterios versus Miz and Logan Paul. Now, I'm going to just go on the record right now and say I, I don't care when they bring in celebrities unless it makes sense. Now, in the, in the, if you want to look at it as, well, Logan Paul is a very popular YouTuber and Miz is all about, you know, Hollywood and television, that works. I just don't care to see Logan Paul. 
I know he's an athlete. I know he's boxed. That's about all I know. I don't care for his channel, and I personally don't care for his opinion on a lot of things, especially when it involves MMA. With that being said, I just, again, I think this is going to be more of a feel-good moment. I, I have the Mysterios winning. I think I think they're going to get it more mainly also due to the fact that they had Miz unmask Mysterio the week prior. So the fact that they're going to have him win here feels like a little bit of an insult. Um, me personally, I'm not putting too much into this match. And I, I think I think it'll be a, it'll be an okay match. Um, I am not really been behind a lot of Miz's wrestling as of the last several months. Whatever wrestling there has been, I, I feel like he I feel like it's more him talking and his um, whatever programs they have him working in where he's you know it's more of like an event rather than a match, and that's fine. But I have a feeling we're gonna be getting possibly to the end of whatever heelish stint he's on and um i don't know i'd like to see him return back to the official mid card and maybe win in a proper mid card title um that, that'd be really nice <laughs> so oh that being said i'm trying to remember like finn balor has the u.s title and ricochet holds the intercontinental title and i think they just had both of them lose non-title matches within the last week of each other. I could be wrong on at least one of those. Just goes to show you how much they value those mid-card belts. Absolutely worthless. Not even on the show, mind you. Uh, the next one is a big one. This is the one that a lot of people are talking about. This is Seth Rollins versus To Be Announced. They they made they did a skit where Seth went in and talked to Mr. McMahon, and McMahon said, "I'm gonna release. I'm gonna announce your opponent on uh, on Saturday night." So. Here's what I think is going to happen as of today, the 31st of March. It had broke that Shane was going to was going to be at Mania. He was definitely going to be in town for the weekend of Mania. So there's speculation that he will be there. So I'm thinking this is what could happen. I'm thinking what could happen is um, McMahon is and going to announce who's going to face him, and then, uh, do I want to say he straight up announces Vince, or does like, or does Shane, or I'm sorry, does Vince straight up announces Shane, or does Shane just cut him off? Either way, Shane comes out, and I'm going to tell you right now, if they don't end up doing it this way, let me, let me, I'm sorry, let me finish. So, Shane comes out, he's starting to talk. And then all of a sudden, you hear Cody Rhodes' music play, and here comes the real opponent. This is what everyone is thinking. This is myself. This is what everyone is thinking. This is the big surprise opponent. It has been no, it's, it's no surprise when AEW, um, the, the letter leaked from Cody Rhodes to AEW, talking about him and his wife, we're done with AEW. There have been talks and talks of, Cody talking to Vince and Cody signing with Vince and that WrestleMania was going to be the official date he comes back. And I really do think it is. I I think Shane might play a role in that to some degree if he is there. Um, I will say that if Cody Rhodes is not the opponent and it is Shane, you will see people leave. I, I like... Especially after all the crap that he was trying to pull at the Royal Rumble where he was basically trying to book him going over main event talent or making him look stronger in comparison. And it was funny because if I remember correctly, I think Brock was like, no, not if I can. I literally had to like clothesline him out of the ring and show him like, no, you're not a main event talent and you shouldn't be booking yourself to go over people that, in my opinion, can out wrestle the living crap out of Shane. And don't get me wrong, I do think Shane is talented. This is not early 2000s, mid 2000s Shane, and it's high time he kind of realizes that. So that's that's just that. And if it is Cody, I have Cody winning. Now my question is: Is do they have him coming out as like the dashing Cody Rhodes, or do they have him coming out as the American Nightmare? I really do hope it's the latter. Um, 
I, I read I read one story how they were going to have him come back as Stardust. Remember, that was the role that made him want to leave. So I highly doubt that's going to happen. And if it does, I'll do a follow-up. Um, the next one, I'm, I'm calling it the nothing match. There's there's literally nothing. It's, it's McIntyre versus Corbin. Um, McIntyre wins. I, I'm I'm... This is the second year in a row Drew has been in a nothing match. I think last year it was he was wrestling with Mahal, and I would have really liked a solid match. Like they don't have to make he didn't have to make McIntyre struggle, but show that Mahan or yeah, Jinder. I'm sorry, Mahan. Show that Jinder Mahal can actually go. And honestly, when it comes to Baron Corbin, I'm I'm done with him. I, I clearly they're putting the WWE's putting stock into this guy because. People hate him, and that's it. He's got heat, and he's an, an okay heat magnet for that. But I'd argue if they would have done something better, with like Mad Cat Moss, maybe, and like actually like built him up better, because if I remember correctly, like wasn't he one of the people? Like wasn't Mad Cat like the guy at the Rumble who was eliminating some top stars? So I just I don't know. I, I have McIntyre winning. I have I, this is going to be the piss break match. The next one I, I think is going to be the. Um, the highlight match, and that's Usos versus Nakamura and Boogs. I have Usos retaining. Um, as much as I like Nakamura, and as much as I do think Rick Boogs is talented, I just think Usos retain. I, I I don't know if this is necessarily the WrestleMania moment that Nakamura and Boogs would deserve. I think under different circumstances, maybe, but I think Usos are just an altogether better tag team. And mainly because up until this point, all the good guys have been winning. I think this is the match where, like, like all four men are going to have a great... They're going to have a really good match with each other. But I think the Usos are going to... They're going to pull off some heelish stuff. And they're going to they're gonna cut off, you know, the big WrestleMania supposed win for Nakamura and Boogs. And um, they end up, you know... They end up taking away their steam and, you know, get the fans pissed off and get them riled up. Because the next match, I, and again, I have Usos winning. And the next match is Charlotte versus Rousey. And for um, whatever whatever brand belt route Ron, Ron, or, uh, Charlotte has. I'm going to be honest, not a Charlotte Flair fan. I think she's talented. I know she can wrestle and she's very good. I'm tired of seeing Ric Flair version 2.0. I'm... It's no surprise that they made it very clear that they want Charlotte to have the title, a similar title streak to what her father had. And in order to get that, you have to lose. And the problem people are having with Charlotte is that Charlotte is always thrust into the title scene. And a lot of people are getting really tired of it. And that's not to say that she's not deserving of it. There's ways to do it to legitimize her. Like with Rick, a lot of these were heart felt matches now granted a lot of it toward the end of wcw were kind of bullshit swerve i'm gonna hand the belt over to you kind of ideas but that doesn't mean that there weren't hard felt battles in there and with charlotte there had been those matches but they were kind of gifted to her in a way or like she would just show up on smackdown or raw and say you deserve to give me the title shot and woo I think they're going to give it to Ronda Rousey. I think it just opens up more possibilities. And again, it helps just kind of add to Charlotte's women's title streak, if that's really what they're going for. What I'm really worried about this match is Ronda having, not having nearly as much ring time as a lot of people know. I know she trains and I know she does MMA. My worry is that we're going to start seeing some of that sloppiness come out. And I don't care what anyone says. Charlotte sandbags people, especially when she wants to get over. I've seen her deliberately flub up moves to make other people look bad. Um, and I'm worried that the, both of these could happen, you know, together. I'm hoping that's not the case. But I do have Rousey winning only because I think, again, they're going to want a good, another good, maybe feel good moment to end the night because this is technically the last match of the night because the uh, night ends with the KO show. Um, Austin comes out. He's him and him and Owens are probably gonna. I don't think they're gonna have a match. I think it's just gonna be like some talk, some banter, and then I think uh, Owens is gonna get stunned into oblivion, and that's how you know. And then bring in the beers, you know, and that's how we end night one. Everyone's happy. So that's that's my prediction for night one. Night two. 
not looking forward to nearly as much. It's in, as of right now, night two starts with Lashley versus uh, Am uh, Amos or Amos. Um, I, I have Lashley. I'm, I don't. I don't care to see Amos. I'm not a fan of the great Kali type wrestlers where they get these ginormous figures in the ring who are slow. They 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 lumber around. Yeah, they're tough, and yeah, they could beat easily beat people up. But just, there's it's a nothing match that was just made this week from a returning Bobby Lashley. So this was literally made last night. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm sorry, Monday night. Sorry. I have Lashley winning. He needs it. We I'm sorry. Lashley needs to be put in that top spot. He 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 can talk. He's he he can he can go. He can wrestle. I think he I think he really is almost the the complete package of what they're looking for. He's just the victim of unfortunate circumstance. Whether it be injury like injuries or his poor booking ideas. But I have Lashley winning, and I think this is pretty much just going to bump down Amos and probably just litigate him to mid-card, maybe have him do something with maybe one of the two mid-card titles that are not on either night. Ex explain that to me, please. The next one is a triple threat tag match for the Raw Tag Belts, and that is RK Bro versus Street Profits versus Alpha Academy. A lot of people have RK Bro retaining because they think it... like. This is the money tag team they have. I disagree. I think this is going to be the Street Profits night. I, I just, they're just so good. I love them. They're such raw talent, athleticism, ability. They can talk. They got a lot of hype and energy. I like RK Bro, but I, I, I think, I, you know, I, I think, I think this is, I think this will be the match to pull people back in from an extremely boring first match. Um, I, I would, I, me personally, I'd like to see Street Profits win. This is the one where I'm kind of going with more like, more who would I want as in who I think. Whereas most of these kind of line up with both of those. This is more just, uh, I want Street Profits to win. I real, I want them to get a legitimate title run and I want it to happen at Mania. The next one is Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville. Now, when I said back on night one about me not caring about celebrities unless it makes sense, this is what I'm talking about. This makes sense. Johnny Knoxville has made a career out of doing much damage to his body on his various shows and movies and you name it. And I think this is the match where Sami Zayn just beats the living hell out of Knoxville. Knoxville is able to beat the living hell out of Sami Zayn. Keep in mind, Sami Zayn is no stranger to getting beaten up. But I do have Sami Zayn winning, but I I also think, like, the Jackass crew is going to come out, and they're probably going to ambush Zayn, and, you know, everyone's happy. You know, let's overlook the fact that the last Jackass movie was garbage. Next one is, is a nothing match. It's Pat McAfee versus Austin Theory. I have Austin Theory winning only because he, Austin Theory is being poised as Vince's future guy. That's his next guy, and... I don't see Vince's next guy losing to Pat McAfee, despite the fact that I do think Pat McAfee is really talented. He's a really good um, guy on the announce table. Um, he is talented in the ring. I just don't think this is his night. Um, the next is a fatal four-way tag match uh, for the women's tag team belts, and that is uh, Zelina and Carmella uh, defending against Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, uh, Naomi and Sasha Banks and uh, Natalia and uh, Shayna Baszler. Um, I did initially have Liv and Rio winning only because I think that dynamic is more likable. Me, at least, I just think those two are adorable together. Like Liv, I mean, people have been behind Liv for months. They want to see her in, they want to see her in the limelight, but she keeps getting bumped down. However, after thinking about it, I think this would be more poised for a Naomi and Sasha Banks win, mainly because Naomi hasn't touched uh, any kind of championship in years, and I've always felt she's deserving of it. I, see, I think she's one of the, a very well-talented female wrestler. Uh, Sasha Banks is amazing, and I think if you're actually going to put some legitimacy back into the women's tag belts, they, this, these are the two to do it. Um, I think 
as far as the women tag division goes, it could be there. The problem is, is that when you have a team like Zelina and Carmella, which absolutely nobody cares about, like you take the queen of the ring and you take um, someone who is co-starring her husband on a web series that is getting worse by the week. I think it's about time to get the belts off of these two and give them to two people, which people, you know, two other wrestlers in which the people want to get behind. And I do think that would be more Sasha Banks and Naomi. Um, the, ne the next two, I'd say, are going to be the best matches of the night. The next one, um, Edge versus AJ Styles. Uh, I think this could potentially be the match of the night if, if it weren't Roman and Brock ending night two. I have a feeling this could be like one of the best matches that both of these men have ever had. Possibly AJ, possibly the best match AJ Styles has had to date. Because I, I mean, he's had good matches. Don't get me wrong, but like aside from like maybe the thematic Undertaker match, like none of his matches like really pop out at me. Now maybe that's on me, and I need a refresher. But like when I look at Edge, like I think of WrestleMania last year and that triple threat he had with Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns. That was amazing. I look at his. Last man standing match he had with Randy Orton from the year prior. And, and that was amazing. Like, Edge has put on some quality matches over the last couple of years. AJ has been, he's been in the, he's been in the tag team division and he's not really doing that anymore. And, and I think this is, this is the match where these two go out and have like a spectacle. I do have Edge winning, mainly because they, they, they have him doing his new heel gimmick. And in order for that to have longevity, I think there do need to be some wins behind that. So me booking it, I want to say it is Edge winning. I will say that it's Edge winning through shenanigans at the end. Um, so AJ gets a protected loss. Um, both men have an amazing match. And I think that kind of frees up AJ after this to kind of move on. Or maybe they have another... They might have a WrestleMania backlash, like extreme rules match or something, and and I I don't know that remains to be seen. But I do think to really establish Edge, because the only time we really have seen Edge up until this point is like when he's in like main event feuds with Roman Reigns and maybe like one or two other prior to that. Like Roman, like January, he was in a mixed tag match with his wife, and then he showed back up in the beginning of March, end of February. I think it was beginning of March comes out, you know, and then goes full on heel on AJ, you know, the, the double chair shot and then comes out with the brand new heel theme. And I think if that's going to have like a place and it's going to stick around for a while, you know, he's, he's going to need a little, he needs to build up that ego a little bit. What better way than with a, uh, a shenanigan type win. So that's what I think. And, and and I think both men are amazing. And I do see, if those two were to wrestle again, I actually do think I have AJ going over. The last match is Roman versus Lesnar. The third time that these two have met at Mania. First was at WrestleMania 31. That was the event where Seth Rollins cashed in money in the bank. And he ended up winning the world title um, from... I believe from from Brock Lesnar. Yep. WrestleMania 34, it was a straight up singles match with uh, Brock and Roman, and that was the match where uh, Brock uh, cut like busted open Roman, and he was bleeding everywhere, and Brock ended up winning. I see Roman winning, and the main reason is because I think it just opens up more possibilities later on with like him and his mega heel character. Cause I think what does happen is he wins far. And I'm going to say right now, Roman's promo work has just been far superior. Yeah. Lesnar's has been entertaining and fun, but Roman has really been putting on like his a game when he's been talking, especially on like the go home raw. Like this is personal. Everyone doubted me. Everyone second guessed me. Family, friends, everyone. My wife, my kid, my own family. And it's like, I just think there's more to it there to have him win and, can, and like can continue his huge title streak. Now, with that said, I'm going to add this. And I wasn't going to say anything until, again, Mustache Bros Wrestling pointed this out. This would be an amazing way to end night two. 
Roman wins, and I mean he he legitimately wins. No Uso interference because that's just no. Let Roman have this decisive victory. I don't even care if it's through like a weapon contact or something. Well, just keep the Us keep the Usos out of this match, please. Roman gets his decisive victory. Brock Lesnar is laying in the ring, busted open. Usos then come out to the ring after the match. All three men are standing in the ring. You got an Uso on each side holding up their respective belt. You got Roman holding up both belts. Roman's music is playing as loud as the ear can hear and the Titantron gleaming as far as the eye can see. And right before we cut off the air, what do we hear on the Titantron? You hear the instant classic. You hear it. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> He's celebrating and all of a sudden you hear the Titans run. If you somehow, boom, place goes nuts. Comes out with the microphone. I don't know if they... <sighs> they said they'd have him challenge him to WrestleMania next year. And the reason for that being is because next year it'll actually be in Hollywood. Oh, <laughs> that'd be really cool. Um, I, I, it could happen. I don't know. Or maybe, I don't know. Like, if that's how the end of the night where The Rock were to come out. Because I, I don't know if they're necessarily going to do a talking segment. But, like, if The Rock were just, you know, the theme hits, The Rock comes out. And then he, like, turns back and points at, like, the Titan Tron behind him. And it says, and it says, WrestleMania, th like, 20, like, 2023. And it just has... It has Roman and it has The Rock. And then, like, that's it. And, like, you don't, no talking. Like, they both will sit there and nod their head. Or, like, Rock will nod his head. And Roman will just be like, no, no, or something like that. Like, maybe that's how you end the night. And then on Monday Night Raw, Roman comes out and he addresses it. And uh, who knows? I don't know. I'm just, if that were to happen, that'd be so cool. I, I don't know if it'll happen or not. But I, I, either way, I still see Roman winning. <laughs> So that's, those are my predictions for this year's WrestleMania, this Saturday and Sunday. Uh, you got predictions, let me know what they are. Or do a reply video telling me how utterly wrong I am. But that's okay. Because I'm happy with my picks. I think these are the ones I that are... I think, logically, these are the ones that are going to happen. However, if they don't, that's fine. That's the, that's the wonderful thing of wrestling. It's only something I can think about and nothing I don't have any control over. So... At the end of the day, it's all in good fun. So, uh, maybe do a video after talking about it. I don't know. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think and enjoy this year's WrestleMania.